Hello my kings and queens, my dragonflies, welcome back to the video. I hope everyone has had an amazing day. We're back with another video. This is Once Entertainment. True home horror stories animated. It better be worth it. It better be one of those cliche, one of those monsterish things. It'll be something that I know that is true, okay? Okay. So this is the house story by Richardson T. You know I have to do this video because my last name is just saying Rich R. Sand, Rich and Son, Rich and Then Son, okay? So sit back, relax, let's watch. My name is Taya. I'm 18 years old, but this happened to me back when I was 15. I come from a really big family. I'm the oldest of seven kids, meaning that I have six younger siblings. Recently, my siblings and I were taken into foster care due to us losing our home. My mom, who is a single mother, was trying and doing her best to provide for us, with God's help of course. Our mom eventually got us back, which meant that she found us a house. Unfortunately, it was located in a not so good area. Mm. Our house was a two bedroom house with one bathroom in the middle of the ghetto. On one side we had a neighbor, for this story we'll call him Mr. George, and on the right side of the house was nothing but woods. When we first moved in, we couldn't afford beds at the time, so we slept on the floor. Because the right side of the house faced the woods, it was extra creepy at night to sleep, because we also didn't have any blinds or curtains to the windows, seeing as we just moved in. There were times where I would be changing my clothes, and outside of my window, I would see the bushes moving. And not the kind of moving that wind causes, but like someone was trying to peek at me while I was changing. Mm -hmm. While living in that house, there were many different occurrences that were red flags to us. Like one night we were all asleep and my mother woke up to the sound of the knob to the front door constantly being turned uh -oh. as if someone was trying to get in. Mr. George. Another occurrence was when my brother was coming out of the bathroom and because his bed was right by the window that faced the front yard, he was looking out the window and saw a tall figure just standing there watching the house. It was the same thing when he was in our room. Our uh, rooms were split by you? gender since there were so many of us. The girl's room was located somewhere near the backyard facing the woods. So when he was on my sister's bunk bed that faced the forest, he saw the figure again. At the time when my dad was there, was my mother and him went up the forest, he saw hmm. the figure again. At the time when my dad was there, my mother and him went outside to see where the figure was, but the found mom, nothing. She knows that. Now the real thing. One day, my mother said that she wanted to take back our library books. I was born in Charleston, South Carolina but at the time we lived in North Charleston. The library was about a good 30 minutes away from our house, maybe an hour with traffic. So anyways, my mother said that she wanted to take our books back, but asked us if we wanted to come. We kept repeatedly telling her no, because we just didn't feel like going out. With me being the oldest, I figured that I could Don't hold out the fort until she got out. back. So she left and said that she would be back soon. Not even five minutes had passed before she came back and told us all to get in the car. For some reason, she had changed her mind and wanted all of us to come with her. She said she just wanted us to come with her for some reason, like it was a complete 360. I was annoyed at first, dad, but we all got ready and we headed out. When we arrived at the library, my mother was supposed to only turn our old books back in, but for some reason we stayed much longer than expected. We were supposed to leave and come back, but we stayed there for the old books back in, but for some reason we stayed much longer than expected. We were supposed to leave and come back, but we stayed there for almost three hours. Every time my mother told us to come on, either something like a movie or book caught her eye. The younger ones would start playing with the toys, or my mother would get sucked back into conversation with someone else. It was like every time we tried to leave, there was something that always prevented us from doing so. Now, in our house, because it was so small, All right, it got got gone. very easy because it was an old house. So our landlord came and installed one of those AC units that hang outside of the window. Because when it turns on, it sucks the hot air out of the window and pushes the cold air in. This is important for the story. So when we came back to our house, my mother noticed something was off. All of the lights were on when we specifically remember turning them off. I did a double take because also our AC was gone. Because what? it was gone, that left the window wide open. My mother and I got out and told the others to stay in the car. When we got to the door, it was unlocked and our place was trashed. Our clothes were gone through, my that bed had boot marks bad. on it, and my brother's bed too. And the funny thing is that they didn't take anything. Our laptops and computers were still there, so was the printer. 
It seems like they came in and took only things like diapers, wipes, and they messed with our food and then left. And it was one of the scariest moments of my life. My mother called the police and they inspected the area, but they never found anything. We called our landlord and he put new locks and curtains on our windows, and we got more food and supplies. Good. After that, we had no more break-ins, and we Security moved out arm. after a year. While moving into our new house in a better, safer area, okay. I remembered something that chills my bones to this very day. Girl, my mother and I both noticed something when we came home that day. When we got out of the car and went to the door, we slowly pushed the door open, and what we saw was truly terrifying. When someone comes to break into your house, they might put a chair up against the door to block maybe the police, or to let them know if the person who owns the house has returned. But usually, the chair would be facing backwards. Was it a sacrifice? When we opened the door, the chair was faced towards the door as if someone was sitting in the chair waiting for us to open the door. It was faced like how it would be if you sneak back in after curfew and your parents are sitting facing the door waiting for you to come home. It was like they were waiting for us to come back and when we did, they would take matters into their own hands. I thank God for that day, because if he didn't tell my mother to take us to the library, or even if he hadn't kept us there for so long, uh, I fear what would have happened to us all. Oh, I know, oh. Yeah, this is a pretty good story. Uh, the last part was scary. Um, yeah, thank God the mom told y'all to come on. I'm glad she did a diversion, cause if not, y'all would have stayed. Something bad would happen. She would have come home. The mom, the man would be sitting right there. Yeah, but thank God for this day. This is a good story. Tell me guys, you think? Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Check out my music. Check out my gaming channel coming soon. Remember to have the most awesome pause of the day. Stay grateful. Stay blessed. Until next time, you guys. Do shush.